everyone, welcome back to Carrots and Olives. My name is Brittany and today I thought we could talk about fountain pens. Okay, so I have a package here which reads Franklin Christoph. Really excited about that. Just so you know, Franklin Christoph shipping is always on point. I always get their stuff within two days and I'm even further away from their location now than I was when I first started with fountain pens and buying from them. Uh, I ordered this on Tuesday and I got it today, it's Thursday. So I wanted to talk about this and then also about like my Franklin Christoph fountain pens in general. So I decided to put everything in here since I don't have like an actual zipper compartment specifically for my Franklin Christoph, since I am kind of slowly getting a collection here. These are all my Franklin Christoph fountain pens. I have it in a pen roll from Handstitch Leather Tea that I got a while back. And I thought I would just share some of the pens I have in my collection, specifically from this brand. So let's talk about this one, this was my very first fountain pen from Franklin Kristoff. It is a ghost body, which is not completely transparent, but you can still see through it. Um, and it is called the model number 45. It's, a, it's, in my opinion, a pocket pen. I'm pretty sure other people would agree. So this is the smallest pen I have, and the nib was just a standard medium. Honestly, I really didn't like the way it wrote. So I haven't really used this one. It can be converted into an eyedropper, meaning that you can just put ink into the body and then make sure you seal it up really well and with silicone grease and then you can use it like that or you can use it with the small I think it's like the international cartridges so this was the first one I got but I wasn't gonna stop there um, I kept hearing a lot of good things and I was like maybe I should try another pen so if I'm not incorrect I think this was the second one that I got and this is the all black model 66P, which is a smaller version of, I think the 66. And I wanna say the P stands for petite, but I could be wrong. Um, Franklin Christoph always has their like initials on the finial up here. Let's see if I can get that. You may be able to see it now. So this one is actually really nice. Pretty much all of my Franklin Christoph are a like a turn cap, turn twist cap type of fountain pen. This was is like one of my favorites and I love how big the nib is. And this is a medium, but I think this is a Maya Sun, Sun I'm not even going to attempt to try to <laughs> say the name, but it's a special grind on this nib. And I think it was my very first special grind I got. So it's really nice. Not as petite as the smallest one, which is the 45, but it is pretty close. It's not too big and I think it's a really good size. So the only downside to this is that it doesn't take regular um, cartridges or converters in here, so I have to put a short cartridge. And you know how I like to use a bunch of different inks, so that sometimes can become a problem, which is why I don't use it that much right now or lately. Um, the next one would be this one. And this one is the model 20 and it is called like the Marietta. It's part of its name. 
This one has the antique glass body or barrel and it is my only slip cap fountain pen. So it just slides on and off. And actually I forget half the time because I'm always like turning it and then the nib ends up coming off. So I have to constantly remind myself that this is just a slip cap. This one is a good size as well and you can use it as a eyedropper and it's pretty cool to see the ink slash around in there. Right now I have a converter in it and um, this one is actually, I think it's a 1.9 millimeter um, stub and I think it's one of my largest stub fountain pens. It writes really well as also. Next are these two, which are both the same pen. Something I rarely ever do, buy the same exact pen in a different color. I don't really do that anymore um, because I, well, the reason why I did it here is because I felt like I, well, I thought I lost this one when I moved to my new location and I was nervous about it and freaking out that I lost it. Well, I finally uh, got the money and I bought this one because that's the only one they had at the time. So I got the ghost. This is the model 25 Eclipse and I have it in the ghost and then in the black color. So these are super cool, which is one of the reasons why I really wanted to get it and why I ended up getting another one um, because I really love the feature where you take off the cap and you can store it right here on the clip. I think that is such a cool feature and it's just, it, it actually shortens the, the pen and you don't lose the cap, which is one of the reasons why I always preferred a pen that would post because I didn't want to happen to lose it since I'm always journaling like everywhere in my house and when I set it down if I'm like on the couch then it could just get lost very simply and easily this one does the exact same thing so anyway that's one of the things that gravitated uh, me towards this style of pen these two pens have a number five size nib and it's a hooded nib. So um, not really something that you can interchange yourself. I think you'd have to actually take this or send it back to them if you want to get a different type of nib on these pens if they do that. Um, or you just have to stick with the pen that you or the nib that you originally wanted for these pens. So the next ones are actually these two, which are pretty similar in style. This one, the smaller one is actually a 45L and it doesn't have a clip. The larger one is a 46XLV1 um, solid ice. And XLV1 is like the num numerical number that I didn't think about, whatever that, whatever number that is. But that's what these two are. This one here is really cool looking, but it's quite larger in size. And I actually prefer this size um, when I compare these two together. Now this one is a number six nib. This one is a number five nib. And this is the one we're going to really talk about today. This one has been giving me a lot of problems lately. And when I first got it, I wrote with it once and I didn't like it. Uh, I sent Franklin Kristoff an email about how dry it was and how it wasn't writing correctly. But they said that this is typically what happens to a number five size nib. And I don't know, I guess at the time I wasn't really experiencing it. And I don't know if I could have taken it back, but I think I had already inked it up. So I couldn't. So I just kept it and it was just stored in my pouch for a while before I did anything to it. So I just picked it up maybe a couple weeks ago, a week ago, and... I decided 
to buy this to change out the nib. So this is my first purchase buying a nib only for a pen. Usually I'll just buy another pen, but because I like the body and the style of this one, I decided let's buy a replacement nib and see if it works better in this pen. So I'm pretty surprised and happy with myself that I didn't, you know, spend a lot of money. <laughs> Their nibs are pretty reasonably priced and, um, you know, you can get a lot of different nib options before you actually start spending the price of a fountain pen. Did that make sense? The price sounded weird. So. I ended up getting the number five nib unit for this one in a SIG broad. I wanted to keep the same size width because I really like that. Um, I have a lot of fine and mediums, but not that many broads or even larger. So I want it to still be, you know, where I can use it for journaling and where it's not too big. But I also um, wanted something a little bit different in size. So they do come with like, I guess these are collectible cards. Um, it's been a while since I've ordered from them. So this is the card that came with my order. I think this is the first one I actually have a picture of a fountain pen on it. I'm not really sure what you do with these. You just collect them. Let me know in the comments if you are a regular buyer from Franklin Kristoff. Okay, so this is how it's packaged. And they do give you a card to say that, you know, this nib has been specially ground. So, and then it, and then the whoever grounded it will put their name, so it's authentication card. I don't know why I said that's so weird. But anyway, so I have that, you wanna hold on to those, and then I have their card with their information on it. Okay, so let's take a look at the pen. I am having issues with it drying and it's not starting the next day. So I either like push out a little bit of ink, I even sometimes try to push a little bit on the nib to get some ink out, but it doesn't always work. I wanna say the reason could be because not only is the nib a number five, so it's quite small, but also every time I do open this back up, my fountain pen doesn't seem like it was capped as tightly as when I left it. I don't know why that is. I don't know if that has anything to do with like pressure. <laughs> I don't know. But it's so frustrating and I, I'm coming to really enjoy this pen as I'm writing with it while it's nice and juicy, you know, after I get the ink flowing, but it's like those hard stops and, and starts that get in the way. So I'm thinking, I'm hoping that maybe it's just the nib. Let me see if I can actually do a writing sample for you with this nib that I have. So I had just some of those notes there, but let's see. So it is writing pretty well right now. I do find some inconsistencies with my cross lines. My vertical lines are perfectly, typically per perfectly fine, but it's my cross lines that tend to skip on me, which is another reason why I, wanted to get another nib and it just the lines don't seem consistent 
it's really weird. So I even switched out the ink. So I went from what could possibly be like a drier ink to one of my juiciest inks that tend to work with a lot of my fountain pens. And that is the uh, Platinum Carbon Black Ink. So what I'm going to do is clean this out really quickly and I'm going to switch the nib, ink it up, and we'll see, we'll see how it goes. Okay, so I've replaced the nib and Franklin Kristoff has an easy way to do that amongst other pens as well. But you pretty much just have to pick the right size. They only have two sizes, which is the number five and the number six. And then you pretty much just screw it on. So because my pen was already inked, I decided not to empty it out and re-ink it and everything. So I just kept it upright, screwed off the nib, and then screwed in the other one, and voila. So I felt like I've given it enough time for the ink to catch up. Let's test it out. Ooh, this is very smooth. Can I write smooth? So, Honestly, I didn't have any back record of what nib was previously in here, if it was a special grind or not. I couldn't remember, and so I was hoping that it could have possibly been a SIG, but I'm realizing it's not, and I can kind of tell now that I have pens with SIG and others that don't, uh, what a SIG pen would look like, um, or a SIG nib. So you know what? I don't hate this. In fact, I love how the broad writes. Oh, there's a little bit skipping, but not nearly as much as I was having with this pen, with this nib at the top. So obviously it's going to be a little bit of an adjustment to see not even like with the way that you hold your pen can affect the way that the nib writes. Sometimes nibs are, can write better if they're closer to like a horizontal um, direction than vertical. And for me, I pretty much like to write more upright and sometimes even at the tip. But I, I am pretty, pretty pleased with the way it's writing right now. I guess the big test would be leaving it with cap on for a couple hours and coming back to see if it writes just as well. So I will probably put a comment somewhere in this video um, if it did succeed in that test. I also wanted to quickly do a comparison. These two are also SIGs, and these two are my, uh, like a, I have a fine in this one, and then I have a medium in this one. So since I have all three, fine, medium, and broad in SIG, I will show you the comparisons. So I have this Edelstein Smoky Quartz, 
uh, ink here, which I really, really, really like this brown. And I thought I would just dip my pens in the ink to give you an example. Okay, so I apologize, you probably weren't able to see the bottom one. But here is the comparison of the SIG grinds, fine, medium, and broad. You can see shading with all three. Um, but the difference I noticed with the SIG is just the sharpness of the edges. It's instead of having the curve on the edges of your letters, the SIG are more squared off. And you can kind of feel that more with like the broad and the medium when you're writing, how it's almost like kind of sharp if you start writing at a different angle. Sometimes when I'm writing with my pens, my pen kind of turns on me and, um, and then it becomes kind of sharp and may or may not write well at certain angles. So, um, that's what I find and yeah so I'm pretty pleased with what I have going on here we will see how it works over time and I want to thank you guys for joining me and I hope you found this video helpful if you did make sure to give me a thumbs up and to subscribe if you're new to my channel and I will catch you guys in the next video bye